Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and we are about to class up this joint with a recipe from Milk Street Magazine. We are going to make some Tuscan beef and black pepper stew. I am a big fan of Chris Kimball's Milk Street, both the magazine and his PBS show. What I really like, besides the fact that it's clearly designed for foodies and cooks, is that it has a distinctly international influence. And as a result, a lot of the recipes are either keto-friendly or pretty much ketofiable, if that's a word, I think I just made that up, by substituting out an ingredient or two. And that's what we're going to be doing with this Tuscan beef stew. Now, speaking of substitutions, I'm going to answer those questions proactively here. If you have any other substitution questions, the answer is no. First off, as a thickener at the end, we're going to be using some xanthan gum. If you're not a fan of xanthan gum, you've got a couple of options as thickeners. One is pretty much not so much keto, and that's cornstarch. You could make a slurry of one tablespoon of cornstarch in one tablespoon of water and add that as a thickener. You could also do the same thing with arrowroot. One tablespoon in one tablespoon of water and add until you reach the desired thickness. From a carb standpoint, they're pretty much comparable and it will add about two grams of carbs per serving. This recipe also uses wine and to be sort of authentic Tuscan, I recommend a Chianti. You don't have to go out and break the bank on this. This particular bottle was less than $6 at Aldi. And it works out just fine. Alternatively, another dry red, like Cabernet Sauvignon, would work. If dietary restrictions keep you from consuming wine, you could maybe go with beef broth. I haven't tried it. It's going to alter the taste of the recipe rather significantly. And finally, for the beef, you could use beef chuck roast, you could use boneless beef spare ribs, or a slightly more expensive option. I'm going with the Aldi's Black Angus Country Style Ribs. I have three pounds of meat here that I'm gonna cut into about inch and a half cubes. I'm also gonna trim away any really large chunks of fat. We'll take our meat chunks and put them in a bowl for later. And this fat I'm going to add to my collection of fat scraps so that I can eventually make some tallow. I'll link to my tallow video right here. If you've never made it, it is liquid gold. We will start by adding two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil to our instant pot or other multi-cooker. We will then set our instant pot to saute high. Once the oil starts to shimmer, we will add eight cloves of garlic, smashed, and one medium yellow onion, sliced in half and then cut thinly. That's about 150 grams. We'll cook the onion and the garlic, stirring occasionally, for about seven to 10 minutes or until the onion starts to turn golden brown. It has been seven minutes and our onions and garlic are looking nice and golden brown. So we will add one and a half cups of Chianti, that is 355 milliliters. Scrape up any brown bits that might be on the bottom of your pot. And then let this continue to cook until it reduces down by about two thirds. This should take about 15 minutes. It's been about 12 minutes and it looks to me like our wine is reduced down enough that I'm gonna add two tablespoons of tomato paste. Which I will stir in. One half tablespoon of sea salt. Two teaspoons of coarsely ground fresh black pepper. Three bay leaves, I'm using fresh bay leaves from my garden. Two sprigs of fresh rosemary and our beef. By the time I trimmed the fat off of mine, I was down to about two and a half pounds, anywhere between two and a half to three pounds, which is around 1.35 kilograms. Stir the beef around to coat. Then arrange in a single layer. Press cancel. Put on the lid, 
set the vent to sealed, then set to pressure cook at high pressure for 25 minutes. Once the Instapot is done, we will let it do a natural release for 15 minutes. If after 15 minutes, we still have a seal, manually release the remaining pressure. We'll then remove the beef with a pair of tongs, being careful not to grab any of that rosemary or onion or garlic. The rosemary sprigs, you can pull out and discard, along with our three bay leaves. Set the beef aside. Then we're going to blend together what remains in our pot with an immersion blender. And we will continue to blend while sprinkling in one half teaspoon of xanthan gum. The sauce should now be silky and emulsified. So we'll put our beef back in, give it a little stir, press cancel on our instant pot, then saute at normal. And we'll cook this for another five to seven minutes, stirring from time to time. And finally, right before serving, we will add another two teaspoons of freshly ground coarse black pepper and one teaspoon of minced fresh rosemary. Stir to mix. And then we'll serve on top of some creamy mashed cauliflower. All right, dear, you can give it a taste. melts in your mouth. I don't barely have to chew. It's very creamy, the cauliflower. Very tender and flavorful. I can taste even taste my fresh rosemary from in the garden. Very good, dear. All right, let's see what I think. Hmm. Wow, that just totally melts in your mouth. And that black pepper got a nice little bite to it. This is a winner. That was a wonderful dinner. It was basically like gourmet meets comfort food. Now I will say that this is a little bit time consuming, very little active time, but from start to finish, you're probably looking at close to two hours, which kind of makes this a weekend meal. But man oh man, is it worth the time? I will include a link with the printable recipe and macros down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button. If you're not a subscriber, why not? Hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified whenever I release a new video, hit that bell and choose all notifications. And lastly, if you'd like to help support the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, click that join button and see what the memberships are all about. Thanks for watching.